This is the four-hole challenge. I'm down here at the beautiful Buckinghamshire Golf Club and I've been joined by a legend, an absolute legend, Glenn Hoddle. How are you, mate? Hi, Jubes. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, you up yeah. for it? Yeah, I'm up for it. Yeah, never been up so early. <laughs> <laughs> for the birds and everything. Nice. Absolutely. What a beautiful course, though. It's lovely. It really is a fabulous course and it's... Uh, well, it's just good fun to play. Bit yeah. of water though, Tubes. I can see. Just the first one we're playing, there's water all I over the game. I think the first three we're going to play has got a bit of water. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, Glenn, what's your handicap? My handicap at the moment is 10, Tubes. 10? Yeah, 10. Yeah. Decent. I've uh, got down to eight whoa, a few years ago now, but then yeah. after me stuff and all that, Absolutely. And defibrillator in me back, all these excuses, yeah. I'm back at 10 now. I heard you actually got the defibrillator moved so you could play golf. That's exactly what the specialist said to me, <laughs> we're putting a defibrillator in your back, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, first of all, I'm thinking golf straight away. <laughs> when, <laughs> just I said, golf I said, life. I just went, where's the safest and the best place to not interfere with a swing? And he, and he was obviously a golfer, he went, put it in the, put it in the backside there, put, put it right there around the corner. So I went, You'll do for me. Yeah, four! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Right, let's crack on. Good what man. a guy. Play well. Thank you, Glenn. Enjoy. Good luck. Yeah, all this social, <laughs> social stuff. Right, so I've seen the water. Not going to lie, Glenn, absolutely bricking it. <laughs> <laughs> what water? Exactly. I'm just going to aim left. Oh, look at that. Oh, get up there, boy! <laughs> That's a super strike. Tubes, I forgot to ask you, what is your handicap? Mate, 16. 16? <laughs> I've never hit one as far as that, actually, all the years I've been here. That's a great shot. Oh, the Glen Hoddle effect is rubbing off on me. <laughs> get in there! See, I never go in the water here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't believe I've just done that. That's a great shot, son. Brilliant. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that could be near the water, that, you know? That's nowhere near the water, it's straight down the middle. No, in the summer, that, no, it's all right, it's okay. It'll do for a first swing early in the morning. Ooh. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> Glenn, once again, mate, thank you so much Pleasure. for joining me on the four hole challenge. Um, how long have you been playing golf for and who got you into it? Wow, um, it's quite embarrassing, really. I should be better than 10, shouldn't I? I started when I was about 16, 17, you know. Really, yeah? Yeah, we were APs at Tottenham and it was that 76, I remember it, summer, it was so hot. Yeah. So hot. And the lads, the APs, all the APs and some of the younger pros, we went off to White Webs. Right. I've never been there since. White webs near Enfield and uh, parched fairways. I remember playing, it was useless. Topping it. What, just literally? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. We all went out and had a bit of fun. Yeah. But every now and again, you'd hit one. And that was yeah. it. That was me hooked. I was like, yeah. And then I'd hit, top it for another six or whatever. <laughs> yeah, just wait for the next one. <laughs> and then, then you'd hit a good shot and you didn't know why yeah. you hit a good shot. And to be honest, even now, I, I'm not sure. When it goes back behind me, I'm not sure whether it's going to be a good shot, a bad shot, or whatever. And I think that's it's a mad hold. game, isn't it? It is mad. And I think that's you know, unless you're down to two or three and scratch and a pro, yeah. When it goes behind you, you're never quite sure <laughs> what's going to happen, whether you're going to make good contact. And so I've been playing since I was sort of 16, 17, really, with the old, yeah, the old real wooden clubs, you know. Yeah. What were they like to use? God, like dear. They. Well, they just seem so small now. Yeah. It was so small, the target to hit the balls. And, you know, when you think back in the day when, when Nicholas and Watson, when I was a kid, 16, 17, I loved watching the Open. Yeah. But they were using these woods and, and the skill and the length that they hit really was as long as today, really. Yeah. With the clubs that they were using. It was Crazy. amazing. And the shots that they played. Super. Really was great. Um, who's the best uh, footballer? Uh, you've played with at golf? 
well, without, for the best at goal. Well, we've outshadowed that Simon Davis. I've heard everyone keeps he saying is. this. He's, just, he's a joke, isn't he? He hits the ball pure like a pro. He really does. From tee to green, he's probably plus four. He's an amazing player. Um, Lee Dixon's a good player. He's down to two now. Is he? Hits it a long way. Um, yeah, there's some good, there's some good bandits out there. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard just Simon look, Davis. Look at the a 16. Ju- the 16 <laughs> handicap has just outdriven me by about 60 look yards. Oh dear! Look at that. <laughs> my mate would say I could, you could build a Tesco's in between my two balls. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, this is where, this is where the defibrillator comes in, because I can say like, excuse, you know, I can't get through the ball. <laughs> I've, I've had a heart attack as well, Glenn. <laughs> I can bring that in. Oh, you're a Chelsea fan, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Not much carry is there anymore. Oh, <laughs> the summer. Yeah. Then normally I can, I can easily, on the second shot, the amount of times I top this. Is that a three wood? It's a five wood, but five I should, wood. I could. I can't hit, I can't hit five. I can't hit woods off the green. Off the uh, fairway. Yeah, you'll see in a minute, nor can I. <laughs> <laughs> um, amount of time, see it's a par five, so you could take a five iron, just did it up there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be brave today, because sometimes I do top this thing. <sighs> right, left of that bunker if we can. Oh. No, in the bunker, don't go in the bunker. Is it in the Lewis bunk? They should be just short of that. Short? Maybe. Just short of the Take that. Yeah, that's okay. Happy with that one. Look at it. Look at it. This is where it goes tits up though, Glenn. <laughs> this is where it goes tits up. Nah, not off these fairways. Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Yeah, but it's a par five. So, you, do you want to know what a bunker is? This Come is on. great. This I love this. Have you seen Glenn's bit of kit here? Look 144. at one forty-four. Look at this bit of kit. There's Tell the fixer. Hello, Tell. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. This. Is, this is brilliant. He's got an iPad. He's got there. They've got the green there. Look. He says. Where's my PA? <laughs> Look at that. 225 to the green. Have you got that in you? Glenn's dudes? got an iPad. I've got a Nokia. <laughs> Here we go, right. I get battered on this channel, Glenn, for always taking my seven iron. That's it, don't but worry. It's a par five. Exactly. Just be in position. Oh. Get it down in position, Glenn. That's uh, <laughs> that's new. <laughs> I was going to shout. If you're a guru, I was going to shout seven, <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven. Oh well, give me half a chance oh, then. Oh no, mate. I'm back in. I'm back in it after that drive hit. Glenn, what was a young Glenn Hoddle like? What in football, or golf terms? <laughs> <laughs> as a person. As a person, yeah. uh, I think as a kid growing up. I mean, all I ever wanted to do was play football. That was oh, incredibly, at a very young age, mum and dad said, even before I could walk, I had a football. Yeah. It was that stupid football. It was just all, it chose me in many ways, football. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was pretty shy, you know. Oh, yeah. I was very shy, yeah. Yeah, very shy. Just wanted to play football, really. Um, pretty boring. It was football morning, noon and night. And when I got dragged in, when dad came in, it was dark, it would be... I'll be upstairs with a sponge ball, chest, volleys, yeah. head in, everything. Yeah, in my room upstairs in the bedroom. So it literally was like that. But football, I was pretty football, shy. Football. Yeah. Um, but I think football got me out of that shyness, playing in a team. When I went on that pitch, as yeah. a kid even, I'd become different a little bit, you know. Yeah. I'd become a little bit more, more belief in myself, yeah. And what age did you realise you had a special talent? Because you did have a special talent. I mean, unbelievable footballer. Um, I suppose I kept playing about, you know, two years above yeah. my station, my, my age group, and I was holding my own, if not more. Yeah. And Tottenham saw something when I was 11. And back in the day there, it weren't like eight or nine, you were only 14 or 15 when you could go to a club. Yeah. So I was always training with the 15 year olds at 11. Oh, wow. Yeah, I used to get on the train on my own from Harlow uh, after school, 
Tuesdays and Thursdays for about five years. You couldn't do that now, could you? With your Absolutely youngsters. not. No. You know, the sights I saw yeah. on the trains coming home, Dad would pick me up at Harlow Station. But that was dedication for me. That was, I just wanted to be a footballer. And yeah. I, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't miss one session for four or five years. So it was, it was that was the dedicated side that yeah. people don't see. But um, yeah, I, I suppose I, I had a lovely year playing with my dad. Oh, cool. I went into men's football at 15, and uh, just before I signed Apprentice, Spurs didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd get away with it now, Absolutely would you? Absolutely not. But um, no, that was great experience for me because playing against the men, the strength. Were they just. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and a little 15 year old, you know, it's trying it's to do. Yeah. Oh, I had a few people wanting to break your leg and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good. But it was good for me. Yeah. You know, the fella came up one day and he said, oh, You do that again, I'll break your leg. And I started laughing. And he went, oh, I mean it. <laughs> I won't swear, because he swear as well. But, and I looked at him and I thought, oh. And then I thought, how long to go? 20 minutes. Oh, I'll play one touch. <laughs> I took me to play one and two touch yeah. because this fellow wanted to break my leg. And I was like, OK, then I've got to try and play a Get bit different. Yeah. yeah. So it was all a learning curve at an early age. Oh, so the fellow who tried to break Glenn's leg. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> You've done me a favour. Thanks a lot. <laughs> how far, Glenn? Uh, mine doesn't tell uh, Is there money on this? What? Yeah? Is there money on it? Well, there's 360 <laughs> yards to go if there is. 124. 124? I got 120 from here. Oh, this is big, this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, shot. <laughs> Dancing. I'm a dance, 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 dance machine. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's gone through the back, that is. Very skinny. Take two. <laughs> so, Glenn, growing up, Loads and loads and loads of Spurs fans and probably other supporting teams as well. You were their hero. Who was your hero growing up? Um, I was a Spurs fan from a very, uh, you know, seven or eight. And I uh, lived at Harlow. Dad used to take me down there. And then obviously I got tickets when I was a, on school, schoolboy forms and that. But um, it's weird. I, I watched Jimmy Greaves very closely. Jimmy was special yeah. as a Spurs player. But my, if you ask me who my favourite player was, it's a weird one because George Best was probably my favourite oh. player to watch and, and uh, although Bobby Charlton, two Man United players, Bobby Charlton was probably where I picked up stuff, it, the style of play was more, I picked up things from Bobby Charlton more than probably George Best, yeah. the style of player that I was, but uh, George Best was, when he used to come to White Hart Lane it was crackling, the whole place was crackling, it yeah. was an atmosphere. And, the, and you know, the style that he had. And I used to remember going as a kid, just like any other kid would be doing now. You go in the back garden and you're trying on the things that Bestie did. Yeah. You know, in the garden against the, you know, the, the, the pole that we had, you know, in the garden that was on the laundry pole. So it was, it was George Best really that had a great influence on me yeah. as a player. Um, um, but in my game, I felt, you know, Bobby, that little bo you know, Bobby Charlton dummy and George Best dummy, upper body dummy. Yeah. I definitely sort of copied that. Yeah. It's gone out of the game a little bit now. Big it's time. all... A lot of the skills, a lot of the dummies and the... Tr it's, it's down at the bottom half of the, you know, yeah. step overs and stuff like he that. Used to, he used but to... he used to throw his body, yeah, George time. Best and Bobby Charlton. And I, I remember picking that up and uh, pretending imagination in the garden was... I was, I was George Best, you I know, Jimmy Greaves was the same. He had this guy about him. So they were the three sort of players really that stood out when I was a kid growing up, yeah. Man United was special in the sense that I remember watching them win the European Cup. Yeah. That was awesome, you know, for, for a day I'd become a Man United fan, yeah. per se. Uh, that had a big, big influence on me as well. Amazing. Right, putting time. Um, well, oh. for some it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, Glenn, we're both going for birdies. And on this channel, if you get a birdie, it's a... Like it. 
the old birdie dance. I, I, I think I'm pretty safe here <laughs> on that one. Let's have a look. Oh. Go on, turn, turn. Oh. 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 I had my arms ready, but no. <laughs> what a shot. Any tips, Glenn? Um, <laughs> I'm not, you need a bell. <laughs> I tell you what, it's going to come off here. A little bit. That's good, Pat. Come on, come on, come on. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, oh, keep going. Going bad from Ooh. there, mate. That's very good. I tell you, that's not bad. It was, it was tough up that hill. Right. <laughs> For a Maurizio Pari. <laughs> come on. It was a good effort. Glenn, actually. you can have that. That's really? a gimme. That's a gimme all day long. Oh, that's very kind. It's a gimme so, all day long. Glenn Hoddle, one up on the four hole challenge. Not, <laughs> but not bad golfer. <laughs> Glenn, talk us through this hole, mate. Yeah, because it, it looks absolutely brutus. Yeah, maximum. it is. I think it's index two. I, th I think it's the toughest. Yeah. There's a brook just about where I land the ball as well. So there's a brook that runs right across the uh, the fairway and then yeah. obviously the two bunkers <laughs> if, it's, if it's not hard enough and then when you go towards the green like, there's water there's yeah. water in front and it goes right around the side the right it's a lovely hole it really it is, is a lovely but, hole um, let's see different. what we're saying after we finish it though. well yeah <laughs> normally there's a gale force wind in your face but <laughs> right. we're off the yellows today. Glenn Hoddle to throw for her ooh Oh, oh, that's horrible. Shutting. No, that's in the water. Is it? Sh might even be no. short. Yeah. No, that's landed. trouble. I think that's trouble. So you. Am I going to reach that ditch thing? Not if you hit that one. No? What you hit there? No, you'll be over it from this. Your aim is. To be just... fair, Glenn, that will probably never happen ever again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that bridge on. See the bridge. Yeah. So just right of the bridge. Is probably right. your line. Come on. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, that's all right. You're going to be safe anyway. You're going to probably play up anyway before the next bit of water. <laughs> you want to play that again? <laughs> no, no. As soon as I see stuff like that, I absolutely brick it. I know. It puts you off, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a mental thing. But that's golf, isn't it? But to be honest, even if you get over the brook, you know. Yeah. I don't think you'd be going taking, when we get up there, you'll see, I don't think right. you'd be taking the green on I knew anyway. that, that's how I played it. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, throughout your career, you played with lots of players and lots of top class players, but who was the best you played with and against? Well, I've been asked that many times and I, I, I've played with some great players, I really have. But I, it's the same guy. I played with him and against him it was Maradona. Oh. Maradona was, I think, the best player I've ever seen, even yeah. better than Ronaldo and Messi, myself, technically, uh, to play like he did in, in that era on them pitches. He was a genius. So I was, when I went to Monaco, I saw a lot of uh, Maradona in Italy. Yeah. Well, Monaco's near the border, so a lot that picked up the television and all their games. And I don't think, even when the great Pele and people like that, Cruyff, I've never seen anybody be marked by two men. Two men? Yeah, Udinese they were playing. And uh, two men followed him and tried to man mark him. Two of them, and that's they couldn't. A joke. I've never seen that before. No, never, well, never. Alive. And I think that's what you know. Ronaldo, the likes of Ronaldo and Messi, haven't experienced that in this no. era. You can't man mark anymore. No, um, especially not with two. Well, with two players, yeah. I, I was, you know, I was staggered. But they they couldn't get near him. When he was at his height at Napoli, he was unplayable, and he was. Uh, he was special to play with him in Aussie's testimonial, but then obviously to experience the a year later 
the hand of God goal was killed us really. It yeah. was, I don't think it's, um, it took me so long to overcome that as a player, I remember, it was dreadful. But the other goal he scored was a miracle goal because yeah. people say, you know, as a playing, I knew what the pitch was like. It was rutty. Was and that's, it, yeah? yeah, fabulous stadium, the Azteca, but the, the, the pitch was so rutty. And so they, they left the grass really long yeah. because of the ruts. For him to score that goal on that pitch was a miracle. You know, I, you, you, you just tip your, your hat and bow and say, wow. Fair do. You know, there's yeah. only a few of us that are out there playing on the pitch know that. Yeah. Even if you're watching on, in the stadium or te on the telly, you didn't know how poor the pitch was really. So that was, that was just incredible. But no, a wonderful player. Technically, I think, uh, you know, it was all with one, mainly with one foot as yeah. well. It was just incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah. What was he like as a bloke? Well, obviously we didn't, with Ozzy and that, we had, we, uh, we spoke through Ozzy really and Ricky. We, um, I, I didn't really get to know him. We didn't speak, you know, he didn't speak English. So, but I, I love playing with him in that game yeah. at White Hart Lane. There was something there that um, we had a little bit of something going on, you know. Little I think that's where, when the ball comes out, it's, that's, a, that's a language in itself. Yeah. You know, and uh, we had that as, as, you know, a few players of Ozzy and, and Ricky, we had that when they arrived. It was instant, you know, when they arrived. It was, didn't understand people, didn't know what they were saying, but as soon as the ball came out, it Just was... Give me the ball. Give me the well, it was, a, it was like a language, you know. Hoddle and Maradona. <laughs> what a bloody, bloody decent midfield. It's only 100 yards to that right. bunker on the right, so anything yeah. past that, about 30 yards past that, I reckon it could be a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Even Glenn Hoddle's having a go at me in my seven. <laughs> I've got eight. Yep. Yeah. Right, come well, you've on. Got, you've got loads of room down there. Yeah. If you want to go more, you can, but I think seven would be perfect. Come on. Nice strike. No, it's gone a left. Bit left. Sit down. Yeah, it's under the... Should be right there. Got, got it. It's all right. <laughs> Glenn, who was the biggest joker you've played with? Biggest joker? Yeah. Plays with some characters. Kenny Sanson was a very funny guy. Yeah. But I think when I was Tottenham with Peter Taylor, Spuddy, yeah. called him Peter Taylor. He came from Crystal Palace. He was playing for England. It was a big move actually to Tottenham. But he was hilarious. He uh, he had us in stitches. He was the one. I mean, he used to take off Norman Wisdom. Great take off of Norman Wisdom. He was brilliant. He did it all the time. And uh, I remember once we went to Norwich and we Friday night night before a game. He would go into hotels and we'd all, you know, they'd all know Spurs were going to stay, obviously, and all the yeah. waiters are waiting for you. We'll come in to the to the uh, restaurant, and uh, he used to do it at so many different hotels. <laughs> First time he did it, it was, and he used to do his Norman wisdom as he walked into the restaurant, <laughs> and he'd, he'd go, Mr. Grimm's out. He'd, he'd, he'd clip his legs like that, and he'd go down on the floor, yeah. and then he'd go, oh, my glass eye. Yeah. So he'd have every, all the waiters would be looking under the tables for his glass eye. And by the time they're finishing, he's sitting down reading the menu. <laughs> We'd be in hysterics. He used to do it all the time. But the funniest thing I see him do is, he was, out, he was playing the right-hand side, left-footed, yeah. but he was on the right-hand side. And he's dra he had this skill, he went across and he dragged it past the fullback. And he's, he's, <laughs> the, the, the touch line's there and it's running out of space. And he's running and he's desperate to keep it in. Yeah. But the linesman's in front of him. Yeah. And he really gets in his way and he tried to get him yeah. and he couldn't get it. He's, he sees the ball's going over. So he jumps on the linesman's back and starts <laughs> winning. <laughs> well, we're on the pitch and we are just, we've just, well, I can, I can hold it in. And yeah. all the crowd down the, down the side at White Hart Lane there, yeah. before the, the new stadium, it was all, uh, it was standing then. Well, they were just in bits. And he was there. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have been sent off now, wouldn't they? He, that's Peter, he was great. Imagine was that just... all on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> all the <song> is... <laughs> he was sort of running, chasing, trying to keep this ball in. What, what we said afterwards, the band, I said, we said the bloody linesman was quicker than you. He was in front of him. That was hilarious. Love it. Oh, I love so I was it. was looking for my ball. I think it's swimming, mate. I think we've got a casualty. Yeah, got a casualty. I'm so glad I, I was. I'm so glad I didn't play with my grand, my grands, uh, my um, my son-in-law bought me some balls with Rosie, my granddaughter. Oh right. Rosie's name on it, so yeah. I'm glad it's not that. Yeah, one. I was going to say Rosie, you're safe. Rosie, you're yeah, safe. Yeah, safe. 
Right, right I'm back in here. You've got a hell of a chance. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. My, my thought is, play one up and then stiff. I'm going to have to stiff one. What's going for the stiff? I'm going to have to stiff one really right on the pin. <laughs> on the third, on the next shot. I love it. I'm just going to stiff one straight not, on the not pin. Not from here. <laughs> no, no, when, next one. Yeah, that's the only way I can play that. Is I this think. par five? No, four. You've had two, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Lovely could, little. Could have done with a little bit more. Rodney. No, that'd be That's okay. That's happy then. with that? Yeah, yeah, happy with that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, I think you could get there from here. He's getting, he's getting right <laughs> in my head. I'm thinking, funny enough, I'm thinking seven iron. <laughs> I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. Oh, I'm is gonna he go. going for it? I'm going for it, Glenn. Has that ball got a snorkel on it? <laughs> Has that ball got a snorkel, he says. Right, Glenn, watch this. OK, I'm watching, Tubes. <laughs> I'm watching and learning. <laughs> Sit down, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, told you to watch that, Glenn. That's the other thing with golf, though. Over the years, I think it does teach you, it does teach you patience in the end. Oh, big time. Because it's such a hard game, and we all think we can play it when we can't. And you have to, you have to be, you know, be patient, don't you, with golf? Yes. Yeah. You can't play. But do you find it hard though to be patient when you think, I can, maybe I can get there, then realise then you're not actually that good? When I was your age, <laughs> yes, I used to do exactly that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's bitten me in the bum so many times, Golf, that in the end, like there, I could have tried to take, I thought, no, just, just you yeah. play sensible and... Uh, and this is your fourth shot and that's going to be my fifth, right? Uh, oh yeah, two, yeah. three, drop one, four, yeah, you're playing yeah. five, yeah. Silly, really, but yeah. hey. All about the fun. Right then. This is where I said, didn't I? Stiff it. Let's see if I can. Oh, I've pulled it. I've pulled it. You've pulled it, but I take that all day long. Yeah, it's okay. It's very average. You're dancing, mate. Very average. I'm dancing. You're dancing. Nowhere near the DJ, but I'm dancing. <laughs> You're just by the edge of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's the place to be. Yes. There's my ball. You, you take your half. Bye, ball. Bye bye. <laughs> Glenn said I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I could be going two down here if I don't put this. Come on. Nice, I like that. Yeah, oh, good shot. oh you had a bit of, bit See of, that? Bit of gunga on that one. <laughs> a little bit Lovely. of swizzle. That was nice. You then became the player manager of Swindon later on in your career. Yeah. I've always wanted to know this. What is it like being a player manager? Is it not the most weirdest, hardest thing to do? Um, it's not easy. I've got to say, it wasn't easy. Um, but because I was still young enough, I'd had a dodgy knee. That's why I came back from Monaco, actually. My knee was in, was in bits. I didn't think I was going to be playing ever again, but I managed to sort of get back. It wasn't the same. But I thought, well, I can only, you can only be a player manager if you can still affect the game. Yeah. You can't take someone's place. Players will suss you out, and there'll be resentment, and there'll be a split in the camp. So it was a, that's the pressure, the inward pressure that you, you have as a player manager. If you're not contributing, yeah. then you've got to make sure that you, you, know, you play the right team. That's your manager of the club. The club comes first. But at Swindon, at, the, at that time, there was no money. There was, you know, we had a decent squad. Well, you were the best player, weren't but you? But I could still yeah. limp about with yeah. one leg. So I, uh, and we played an, a, a different system to anyone. We played with a sweeper, yeah. had three at the back then. Nobody really did that, certainly in the championship. And a lot of 
teams found it really hard to play against because they hadn't come up against it. But we had some wonderful players there. Yeah. I've got to say, Swindon was some of the best football as a manager I, I think we've ever played. Um, we had some really good players that went on to good clubs, you yeah. know, Kerslake, Calderwood. We had uh, Martin Ling. We had some super suit, super, Johnny Moncur. Mickey like, uh, Hazard was still yeah. there, Ozzy had brought him. But, so we had some real football with Ross McLaren. We had some wonderful footballers. And, and, and as long as I was contributing, yeah. you know, you, you couldn't have the banter in the dressing room. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Because if you walk in, oh, hello, lads, how yeah. was your weekend? Yeah. Yeah. What did you, you went out, did you? <laughs> right, you're fine. It's like, yeah. No, you, is, it, is, it, is it quite difficult, though, with, to go from like, being obviously a player with, you know, with the lad? Yeah. But you're both. Yeah, I think that's where your number two, Johnny Gorman, was good. Yeah. You know, he, he broke that down. But I had to, you know, obviously not be too uh, aloof and away because we were a, we were a team. And yeah. I said to the guys, look, when we, we go over that line, I'm just another player. If right. I need a rollicking, give the gaffer a rollicking. I'm not going to hold it against you, you know, in the team. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's about winning. It's about yeah. getting the results. But we played some beautiful football. We really did. It was really good fun. Had some love. It was great apprenticeship for me as a manager. Yeah. For two years there, and we got them up. You know, got Swindon up, promoted before I went on to Chelsea. But looking back, it was invaluable experience. And my word, we had some fun yeah. playing the way we did, being successful. But when I look back, I just smile when I think of Swindon. It's a beautiful time. That's there. good to hear. Yeah, love it. It's a pot off. <laughs> I think it's just you, Glenn. I think it is, mate. So, we need an abacus to keep our scores today <laughs> on this side. How many have you had? Yeah. So I've, this is your... I've had four. So this is your fifth? Yeah. Right, and you've that's had, my six. And you've had five. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's my six, yeah. Yeah. After that first shot as well. See that? It's all right. Come on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. Yeah, nice part. <sighs> oh, he's giving me. Oh, you Thank miss. you, Mr. Hoddle. You I mean, miss. I would give that to you, but you'd be two up, and that means I wouldn't be able to win. Absolutely. Hey, don't worry about that. There's many of these. Do you feel the pressure of these little pups? Oh yeah, horrible, wouldn't they? <laughs> no, they are though. Yeah, I, I, I hate what's them. What's the weirdest thing? I hate them. There's, you know, you might be playing for a fiver. Yeah. You're not playing for your life or something, are you? <laughs> you get so nervous over little pups like this. <laughs> we all do it. It's madness. They're the worst ones. When well, I look at them on telly and they're playing uh, for a million pounds or whatever, yeah, I'm thinking, like that, oh they? my word. But what is it? There's days when I'm like that and I can't take the putter back. It's like... <laughs> Really? It's terrible, really. Just, just put it in. This is meant to be enjoyable. <laughs> got, ner <laughs> got nervous, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> Glenn Hoddle is two up on the four hole challenge. What a part one. Part two coming soon. Check it out. Here's a little sneak preview. How badly did Gaza smash up that hotel room? Right, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think he put his fist through the door, uh, like it smashed the door. Talk to me about diamond lights. <laughs> <laughs> diamond lights. Diamond lights. <laughs> yeah. So Glenn, we've got a couple of things in common. Uh, one being we're both fantastic golfers, clearly. Uh, <laughs> uh, the second, and obviously the most important, we're both lucky to be alive, aren't we? Oh, dear me. 